we in the Renault system. The function of the Renault system include filtration, reabsorption, secretion, and excretion. So these are the functions we're going to talk about in this class. And these are the other functions of the Renault system. Uh, we are not so familiar with, like produce hormone, we produce renin. We'll talk about this in the next chapter. And when we talk about the renal system, I want you to think your renal system like this. This one, the filter. So your body fluid is like the liquid in the fish tank, and you need the filter constantly clean those fluid. And that's the function of your kidney. You have blood stay in your body and your kidney constantly filter your blood. And those clean blood will be sent back to your circulation again. And those dirty blood will become your urine, you excrete it out. So you need your uh, kidney to work. And if your kidney could not handle this kind of work, you need to send the blood out, use the external machine, clean it, and after cleaning it, send it back, and that's dialysis. So people with kidney failure, they have to do the dialysis. Your renal system includes the kidney, the ureter, bladder, urethra. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about the kidney. So if you have kidney stone, the stone will go through uh, the urethra, start from the kidney, usually due to you don't drink enough water and sometimes it is genetic. And this stone is like a, a blade inside, it will cut through your, all your urethra and go to the blader and from the blader uh, go through the urethra and come out. So it's like the blade cut inside of your body. And the kidney stone, okay, it's called the stone, it's not uh, it's not smooth, it's like the, the razor sharp. So if you have kidney stone, it's not very pleasant because it can be this big, one centimeter. It will cut through all the ureter, urethra, and come out. And this size tell you that's the kidney structure. And uh, the outside is called the cortex, inside is called the medulla, and this is called the renal pyramid. And in this class, we mainly focus on the function. So we'll talk about the functional unit that's called the nephron. And each nephron represents the functions of the kidney. Your blood starts from your left ventricle, goes through aorta, and go to the descending aorta. So it will go through this, and now it go to the renal artery. You have about 20% of your blood constantly go to your kidney and it will be filtered. After it's been filtered, those clean blood will go through the renal vein and go back to your circulation. And those dirty particles your body don't want, it will go through the posterior part. And that's the ureter. Through the ureter will go to the blader. And once it go to here, we call it urine. We don't call it the blood. So your urine directly come from your blood. And this slide show you your blood circulation from your heart when it go out and you have about 20% of your blood go to your kidney. So constantly every second 20% of your blood being filtered. And the blood flow to your uh, kidney called the renal flow. So when the blood flow to the kidney through the renal artery, it gradually diverge out, become the arcuate artery, and eventually it go to the efferent arterial. These are the small artery to send the blood to the uh, nephron. And the head part of the nephron called, uh, called the Bormann's capsule. And the capillary bed it created there called glomerulus. And this slide show you those nephron. So nephrons is a long tube called the loop of Henle. It will actually go into the medulla part and come out. And when the blood go there, it will be filtered into the nephron in the head part called the Bromance capsule. 
and those liquid we call the lumen it will go through the whole tube and eventually when it go to here it become urine and those uh, liquid inside the, the tube, those lumen, a lot of them will be reabsorbed back. So outside of this tube, you found you have a capillary bed surrounded called peritubial capillary. So those liquid from the lumen, once it go out, it go to the peritubial capillary, it become your blood again. Over 99% of those lumen will be reabsorbed back and become your blood again. So you have only less than 1% of the lumen eventually go to this part and it become your urine. So again this is the slide show you the the nephron so, and this show you the capillary network and the first capillary is in the head part called the glomerulus so that's the capillary network and make the blood flow from the blood it go to the tube, then we call the lumen. And you have another capillary surround the tube, so that's the peritubial capillary. And you, you have a capillary connect with another capillary, and that's not normal, we call the portal system. So in the class we talk about uh, in the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland in unit 1 we talk about the first portal system the capillary first capillary is in the hypothalamus and the second one is in the uh, anterior pituitary gland and here we see the second portal system uh, the first capillary is in the glomerulus and the second capillary is in the peritubial peritubial uh, capillary we call this renal portal system and the first one in the hypothalamus we call the hypophysial portal system. In your body you have three portal systems. The third one is between your small intestines to your liver. So this is the renal portal system. And in the glomerulus, this is the capillary created Gomerulus is the capillary network and the blood from the efferent arterial will go to the gomerulus and the pressure is going to push the liquid because capillary is a leaky area it's going to push the, the especially the plasma part it will go from the capillary go to the tube and once it goes to the tube it becomes a lumen so we will go through this proximal tubule and loop of Henle distal tubule collecting duct into the bladder. So once the liquid stay inside, it will keep being taken back, reabsorption. And eventually once it reach here, the environment is very, very different from blood. So in the beginning, the environment of the lumen is very similar to the plasma, but in the end, it's, it's very different. So when it go, go to the end, we call it urine. So it will go to the bladder. And that explains why in the hospital they take your blood sample, they also take your urine sample because your urine directly comes from your blood. So we know a lot of your body situation by looking at your urine. And this slides tell you, okay, those nephron structure. From here to here, about 80% of this tube and they, they will keep doing the reabsorption process. So they don't even have to ask the body, oh, should I take the molecule back? The answer will always be, be yes, because over 99% of the lumen need to be taken back. If not, you, you're going to run out of blood very quickly. So in this purple part, over 90% of them, proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, all this part, they keep doing the reabsorption. So they, they use a lot of membrane protein, they take a lot of ATP. But from here to here, the end of the distal tubule and collecting duct, this area is regulated based on your body situation. And you all have the experience, when you drink a lot of water, your urine will be very diluted. And when you don't drink enough water, your urine will be very concentrated. And that happens in this part. So in this part, depends on your body situation, they, take, they can take more or less water back. So they can change based on your body need. That's the last 
of the nephron. And this is your uh, cortex, this is your medulla. So the loop of Henle actually go into your medulla part. And these slides tell you your uh, nephron's function. You have efferent arterial, bring the blood there, and the hydrostatic pressure will push the plasma, especially the plasma part, go from the from the gomelulus into the bromance capsule. And this process is called filtration. After filtration, the liquid stay in the tube, we call it lumen. And you need to do a lot of reabsorption because over 99% of those liquids need to be taken back. That's reabsorption. And eventually when they go to here, it will go to the bladder. So that process is called the excretion. Now let's look at this one. This one is called the secretion. Secretion is from the blood back into the tube. Because not all 100% of blood will be filtered. When the blood goes to here, only about 20% of them will be filtered. And for some toxic molecule, your body wants to accelerate the process to get rid of them. So you only have 20% of blood will be filtered. If it is toxic molecule, you only 20% of them will be filtered in. And your, your body say that's too slow. So when it go to here, it can take, use the mainly the active transport, send the molecules from here, the blood, go to the tube, depends on the membrane protein. And that process is called the secretion, specific for certain molecules, like uh, penicillin, we will talk about penicillin. Your body handle it like net secretion. You put them from the blood to the lumen. And eventually you get more penicillin being excreted out. And this slide explains how much you get from here, excretion. Depends on how much molecule being filtered in, minus how much being reabsorbed back, plus how much being secreted. So if you filter in 20 marbles here, say nothing happens around here, you get 20 marbles. How much you filtered in equal to how much you uh, excrete. But if you filtered in 20 marbles, you take in 19 and 20 minus 19, you only get one. So when you wait here, you only get one marble. And if you filter in 20 marbles and you secrete 10, eventually you get 30 here. So how much you get in the excretion in the urine depends on how much being filtered in minus how much being reabsorbed plus how much being secreted. And we can use this to figure out how your kidney handle this molecule. If you got more than you filtered in, you know your kidney handle it like a net secretion. If you got less than you filtered in, you know your body do a lot of reabsorption, like glucose. Glucose is, is being filtered in and all of them been taken back, so you got no glu glucose in your urine. Okay, let's take a break.